Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another Record the Story. I'm so excited to have some time just to sit and scrap today. And so I thought what I would do is I would start working on my mini load event because the week came and went and I just wasn't available. And so that is the beauty of load. You pick it up and do it when you want. Yes, because there's always someone showing what they did. So you can always go back and look at inspiration if you need that little push. Okay, so today, oh, I have like three things. <laughs> I get so excited. Someone had made a comment the other day that they really enjoy my excitement and passion for this hobby. And honestly, that's what it is. I'm excited about this hobby. I'm passionate about it because it marries the creativity and then the documenting. That's why I love this hobby. Yes. Okay. So let's get started. What we're going to do today is I'm going to start my mini load. Yes, and I think I may start on day seven and work back. It's just the way it's going to work, probably. Okay, so again, no pressure. It's all about having fun. And so what I decided to do was pull out my stack of page kits that I had worked on. And I think in, I don't know, I think it was video one, two, or three, or part one, two, and three of our building page kits because my lovely subscribers had asked, could you keep working on those page kits? They like seeing that. And then I had some people ask me, can you go through the process? Process of how when you have a photo how do you select which one so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna work on load we're gonna pick out a page kit and then I'm gonna talk about sketches for a minute okay and then we'll come back with a finished page so okay let's get started so when I'm starting with my page kits now these page kits here have no embellishments they are simply all paper and how I have them stored is just in a pizza box Okay, because I do have some scraps, so I don't want to sit them, I don't want to stand them vertically. I need to have them laying horizontally because I have some scraps in here. Okay, and so we will have a part five of building page kits coming up in a few weeks. And that'll be fun. There's a fun little twist to that. Okay, so get your scraps organized. Okay, and get them nearby because we're going to be playing with scraps in part five of our building page kits. So what I have them, I just have them in a pizza box and then I have them separated with copy paper. Okay, and I think I had these laying on the top. I think there was 41. I don't know. I've used some. So maybe I should have kept track of how many I was doing. Oh, speaking of keeping track, are you a scrapbooker who keeps track of how many pages you do a year, how many albums you complete? how many albums you've ever completed do you keep track of how long it takes you to do a layout I love to know those things and for me personally I don't keep track of anything no I just do it <laughs> I just do it and have fun because honestly I'm in so many projects all the time it I have to streamline something so I don't I don't track anything no someone could say how many pages have you created I have no idea <laughs> I don't have no idea. Now, I have, will tell you, I've, the only thing I keep track of is of how many years I've been doing it, only because it's a year longer than my little girl is. So, yeah, I started it before she was born. Okay, so if you keep track of something, and what is that? What is that you keep track of? What is that number? Please share below because I love to see how other people do things and how they handle this hobby. And yeah, I just love it all. Okay, so share below. Yes. Now, I do know that in our Scrap Happy membership, there is a gal who started Load last year, and that's, you know, scrapbooking a layout today, and she continued with that, and I think she's over 400 and some days in a row. <gasps> Can you imagine scrapbooking a layout a day for over 400 days in a row? Yes. Now, that is amazing, okay? And so, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're interested in the Scrap Happy membership, Alice just recently gave me a discount code. Yes, so look up, you know, the information for that discount code is good. It will be listed below and it is good until the end of the year. Okay, so look that up. It's down below. And then also, too, if you're interested in the load event, there's one coming up in October. Now, the one in October for load, which stands for Layo Today, which I think is the most phenomenal scrapbooking event bar none yes absolutely i think because when i look back those layouts that i create and load are my most favorite always have been always will be and i will be so i am so thankful to lane amen 
who started the load event because she really got me out of my comfort zone and stretched me into a new direction of uh, of this hobby so love that now alice boyle is the one in charge of that and so if you're interested in the load event the one coming up in october and I'm sorry I'm doing a lot of chatting, but people have asked me these things. So the one in October, you do have to be a Scrap Happy member. You can't just go pay for that event. You have to be a Scrap Happy member. But if you're interested in that, all the information is listed below. If you have any questions, email Alice. She's she's lovely. She will help you. Okay. So what was I saying? I think I just went on three rabbit holes, but that's okay. We're doing load. We got a discount. We're doing page kits. Yes. So uh, my subscribers had said, can you show more about the process? You have a photo. And I'm going to use the load event that just happened. And for my prompt, because I had this photo printed, I knew I was going to record the story about my daughter and reading. But because of the load event, this is why I love it. This is why I love the load event. Because of Alice's prompt for the day. And the prompt is, of course, the theme for the mini load this time was out of this, out of, out of the world, out of this world. And so for day seven, it was about lunar landing. So every prompt of the of the week had something to do with space, outer space, that type of thing. But the prompts are what is a defining moment in your life? What are footprints you left behind? What is a great moment in your life? What trail have you left behind? And so when I knew I had this photo that I wanted to scrap, which is, you know, it's a good story. But because of the load prompt, now I can just add layers and layers to this story because it is about the love of reading and how my daughter loves to read. That, you know, encouraged her into her major in college. And then also to my love of learning. And then where did that love of learning and reading come from, which is my mom. So this one photo, I'm going to be recording the story about three people and how the influence of one led to another. I mean, oh, that just gives me chills. All because of Alice's prompt from Load. I would have just recorded this. Oh, my daughter loves to read, you know, Ernest Hemingway. You know, she loves his, his novels, things like that. But no, that is why I like Load Event. I'm stretching this with a, a photo that was just a couple years ago. What was the year? 2015, so three years ago. And I'm telling the story that has spanned my entire life. I mean, just, oh, yes, love Load. And I will not... I'll get off of that, but I love load. If you want to stretch your scrapbooking, if you want to learn something new into your hobby, look into load event. Yes, you can take it as simple or as complex as you want. There, yeah. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a load layout. There's my story that I'm going to do. And let's get cracking, okay? Sorry, that was probably too much chit chat. <laughs> okay, so on the top of my page kits that I have stored in a pizza box, is that I have my story-based papers in front, okay? And so this would be basically layouts that I do not have a photo, but I could tell a story. And maybe I can absolutely, I mean, okay, look. It was, the theme this uh, for the mini load this year was out of this world. Would that, would that not be perfect? There we go. There we go. I may absolutely be able to do that. So what will I do here? And I'm gonna have to put these on my lap. Okay, and so here's my photo. Okay, so what am I looking for? Well, I definitely can look for colors, okay? And I know I'm gonna have these colors in there because pink and blue is usually in about everything I do. And then also too, I'm going for my, I know what my story is, I know what my mood and feel is. You know, home, reading, love, <laughs> you know, you can stretch it, okay? And then here's the one tip I wanna say is when you're pairing, and see right there, that would be absolutely fine. Pairs very well, but this is a little more playful than what I want to do about my story. But right there is an example. So what I wanted to say is what you, when you're going through your page kits that you've made ahead of time and you have your photo in hand, and of course you're going by mood and feel, you can go by colors, you can go by both. Now I want you to keep one thing in mind is that whatever you don't feel that your paper can convey, you can make up that mood and feel and that color in your embellishments, okay? Keep that in the back of your mind. This is just a starting point. It doesn't have to be the end all to beat all. It does not have to be your final layout product, meaning you can make up for things in your embellishments. So don't forget that, okay? That was something I had to keep in the back of my mind when I first started doing page kits. I would look at something like this. I'm like, uh, well, it doesn't have this color and it doesn't have that color and, you know, it doesn't have books and it doesn't have, you know, text. You can make up that in your embellishments, okay? So that's really not my mood and feel. 
Okay, what do we have next? Oh, well, that would be, well, we have a typewriter. We have camera. Oh, that would definitely work. It's a little more, a little more light and airy, but that would definitely work. Now, this has turquoise. My photo has blue. Don't be worried about that. Don't even think about this. You do not have to look for pink and blue when I'm looking at this page kits. Just look for something. Now, this had the typewriter, and you have graph, and you have text, and yeah, definitely. That would fit your mood and feel. That would fit your story. They could fit a, this could fit a million stories, yes. Okay? So, again, keep that in the back of your mind. This is just your starting point. Okay? Now, this is more sophisticated. And that would, that would kind of go, you know? My little girl's not a little girl anymore. Well, she is in my heart, but you know what I mean. Okay? Now, since I have been playing with these page kits, and I just recently built these not so long ago, these are fresh in my memory bank, so I know I have some more down in the pile that will. I think my stomach just growled. I don't even. I didn't even eat lunch today. That that's the beauty of scrapbooking. When you get in the creative mode, you don't eat. <laughs> no, this is no calories right here. <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh, man, yes, I probably should have ate something, though. Okay, so that definitely would work because... Now, here's how this would work. Because I have gray, I have text. This is reading, okay? These colors, you can be neutral, okay? It doesn't have to be matchy-matchy. I could make that work. Absolutely could make that work. And once you get over that hurdle that your photos do not have to be matchy-matchy to your papers and your embellishments... It opens up a whole new world because I remember exactly when that happened for me. Because I was the type of person, I would take this photo and, and I would do it one by one. <laughs> I would take my group of photos, I would sit on the floor and I would go through my papers and I would look for pink and I would look for blue and also white. And that's how I would do it. Well, 45 minutes later, then I'm not in the mood to scrap. So this is why page kits really, I mean, look how many selections I have. Okay? Because when you're building page kits, in essence, that's what you're really doing. You're taking your collection of papers and you're narrowing it down. Yes. And then when you built page kits, you made your own color schemes. Now, this would definitely work. Absolutely. No blue. I mean, there's a dark blue. But that light blue, not in there. Not worried about it. Okay. Now, I know that's a little too uh, gone with the wind for me. So, that's not going to happen. That's way too bold. I can skip that. Okay, now this would work because look at all the letters. A little too whimsy for me. I, you know, and I, I say mood and feel all the time, and I will have a video coming up because what I'm going to do, I wrote this down the other day, I'm going to go through some of my layouts that I've already created, and they may be from years ago, and I'm going to show what I mean by mood and feel. We're going go to we're gonna go over that, okay? I'm going to show some more mood and feel type of explaining. Okay, and I, I'm just so excited that so many people have said that when they look now for more mood and feel, you know, theme, however you want to call that, that it really does. You, you look at your supplies so much different, differently. You really do. Now, this would be cute. We got wood grain. We have those hearts. This would really look pretty. Now, look, I have some pink in there, but I have turquoise. But you could so make that work because of the mood and feel. Again, we have wood grain. goes with anything. That's a neutral. And then we have text and we have hearts. Well, wood grain, yes. Well, yes, I could marry wood grain. <laughs> so that would work. Okay. And see, and I knew this section was coming up. Okay, so here we go. I knew I had these sections because this is what I was building, tearing down a page kit, and this was the color scheme. So now that's very bold. But, yes, that's a contender. And there, there is something flying. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that is a contender. That is a contender. And I'm just going through these kind of in a quicker manner. What do we have next? We have, okay. Now, see, that's that. Look at, look at that bold text. Yes. That's mood and feel right there. And there's the pink. Now, I could have swapped that out for a blue and tell me that wouldn't have been perfect. But I will not do that. When a page kit's built, a page kit's built. So, we just won't use it this time. Okay, what do we have now? Oh, now look at this. This is pretty. Oh, this looks collegiate. <laughs> 
mood and feel. Now she wasn't in college just yet, but she was she was getting very close. Oh, I love that. Oh, look, and we even have graph paper. Looks like, you know, paper you would write on. We got a plaid. That's definitely, well, yeah. and then, ah, oh, yeah, that is, that is, yes, that's a contender. That is a contender. So I hope this is helping a little bit, and I'm hoping I'm in frame. Now we have camera. This is a little heavy. Uh, be the type of person you want to meet. I will never get tired of that quote. That's a little heavy. Okay. What else do we have here? Again, that would be really, really... That was basically what I just showed. That would worked. Would have worked. Would work. I'm just skipping it. And I will... <laughs> I don't even know you to go there because I will be doing this. Okay. I'm going to do a start to finish one film with that. Yes. Okay. Now this. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. See how well that goes together. Yes. And I'm not, I don't have a touch of pink and I don't have a touch of that blue, but I like how that looks. So that's a contender. Oh, this looks nice too. These two papers. I think I'll skip that one. Oh, but then that, yeah, huh? I'll skip that one. I already have some more. Okay. And we have this one. And I already have that color combination to the left of me, so I will skip that one because this is a little hot and heavy. This, well, yeah. <laughs> Wood grain. Oh, I love that too. Oh, I love that. Oh, okay. I have to find something. I, I just want to use that. I just want to use that. And that's the excitement of page kits. You just, and this would work too. Okay. This would work, 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 work. Oh, yes. Okay. So there are my contenders. Okay. So I'm going to get this pile off my lap because, yes. And so that is how, when I have page kits, what I do. I just, ugh. see, I have my pile here. You see why you can't have them standing vertically. That is what happens. They have to be laying horizontal when you're dealing with uh, page kits that have small pieces. You must, must keep them horizontal. Okay, now I'm going to put this here. Well, that went on the floor. I have really been trying not to do that because the other day I was filming. And I think I filmed for three hours. I had so many projects on the floor. It was like an obstacle course. And I said to my husband, come here and look at this mess I have created. And he just stood there in the hallway and just shook his head because I did trip three times in one afternoon. But I did. I, I cleaned it all up, but he just shook his head. Yeah. He's like, just have fun. Just have fun. <laughs> okay. So this is one. Okay. So and then what I'll do is I'm just going to narrow my choices again and I'll fan them out. And then we'll talk about batch scrapbooking down the road and I, and I have some tips for batch scrapbooking because this process here, you can even save more time by doing more than one photo sets at a time. And we'll talk about that because uh, in the winter, I sit on the floor and I do a lot of batch scrapbooking as far as pairing things up together. Yes, and we'll talk about that. Okay, now these pieces of copy paper kind of hinder my paper choices in in a bit, you know, in, a, in a way, but I already know what these color combos are. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I narrowed uh, my whole room down to that build uh, that page kit pile. And then now I narrow that pile down to five choices. And right now I will pick one. And I will pick one. And what I do is when I'm down to five, I, I, I take out my least favorite. Okay? Now, I know I love this. Oh, I love it. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I could use... I can use any one of these, and they're going to be absolutely perfect. Oh. Oh, story. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Somebody yell, which one should I pick? <laughs> See, that's nice. Okay, but that's my least favorite, so I'm going to go ahead and put that away. So then there was four. <laughs> then there was four. Okay, we have this one. 
Okay, I'm going to skip that one. So now I'm down to three. And what am I looking for? I'm just basically looking for something that makes me excited and and I, you know what? I I think it's this one. I, I just I might as well just stop looking. I, I just know it's going to be that one. Okay, so I might as well just stop looking. Yes, because this the one that makes me giddy, and that's how I do it. That's how I do it. The one that makes me giddy. This makes me want to sit here and absolutely do this. So that's the one I'm picking. Now, when I did that, I had no idea of the photo or the story I was going to record, but it's going to work out beautiful. Yes, excited, excited, excited. That's what we're going to do. So I have my load prompt. So that's my direction. I have my papers. I have my photo and I will be picking out a sketch in a few minutes. But what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about sketches for a minute. Okay, because we have some new scrapbookers on the channel and some people just are new to sketches and I want to show something. Okay, we're going to leave this here. Love, absolutely love the photo. I love when you can capture people, people in their element. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about sketches for a minute. If you're new to sketches or you're just new to scrapbooking, sketches is just another tool or resource you can use to get things started more quickly. If I just had this in front of me and I had to start thinking about a layout design or where do I want this or how am I putting that photo, I don't have the energy for that. And over the last, I don't know, I would say eight years, I don't even bother. Someone else loves making sketches, so I will happily let them do the work for me. Okay, so I want to talk about sketches for a minute. If you're someone... And there's different degrees to sketches. So this is what I want to talk about today in the sense that when you go seek sketches, and I'll have some resources listed below for free ones, and there is a lot of free sketches. Do not feel like you need to go pay for sketches, okay? Now, once you find a company or a designer whose sketches you're just drawn to, then if they make them available for sale, because Scrapbook Generation is one of those type of companies. And also, too, Becky Fleck with Page Map, she has books. So once you're drawn to a certain one, that's when you start buying them. Once you're drawn to them and you know you love them. Okay? So let's talk about those for a minute. Okay. So you may simply want sketches in this sense that's going to tell you specifically at the bottom, written instructions is what you need to do. Okay? Now, if you're someone like that and you're new to sketches or you just want details, you don't even want to think about even the measurements or what you're going to do. You want exact. Okay, Scrapbook Generations is the way to go. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you right now, they're the one to go to because you, they have one page, they have two page, they have free, you know, and then they also have two specialized uh, travel, uh, Disney pages, that type of thing. So we'll talk about that more down the road. But if you want sketches that are absolutely a blueprint with the actual directions, Scrapbook Generations, and I will list some free sketches from them below. So definitely check them out. Now, if you're someone that wants more help in the design element of things, okay? I would say Scrapbook Generations is more for the placement of things, but if you want more in the design of things, page maps, that's where you need to head. Because in page maps, okay, and these are free resources, I'll have that listed below, they give you more ideas as far as embellishments, and they are just, I would say, the next level, okay? That's what... I think. Okay. Now, uh, I love Scrapbook Generations. I love page maps. And then also too, if you find a certain designer and for me, that's Laura Whitaker. Okay. And I will have the link below for this free, look at this, this free sketchbook. I mean, whew, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So maybe you want, you like something like page maps, but this is too small of a scale. Okay. Now I want to say something with page maps. When they have the release at the first of the month, you can go to the website and they have uh, color examples of these, but there's no instructions. Okay. If you want instructions, look at Scrapbook Generations. Okay. Now with Laura, you can, and I think she's had some problems with her website. So she probably, I don't know if anything's up by now. Well, I know it's not. I just looked the other day. She doesn't have any of her website, um, but she does have her sketch blog and I'll have that listed below. And this is sketches with no instruction, but they're heavy on design, 
but it's a bigger scale. Okay, so with with page maps, it's kind of small. If you're new to sketches, that might be a little hard. For me, I can look at this and I can guesstimate right off the bat. That's a six by twelve. That's a four by twelve. That's a three by four because I've been doing it for so long. But this will give you a better scale because this is one sketch per page. Okay, so that is an option. Okay, so now let's talk about another option. What if none of these? None of these detailed instructions, the heavy design, the actual bigger image of the sketch. What if this doesn't work for you? Well, I'll tell you another resource, and I'll have this listed below too, is to actually print layouts that are completed. Okay? Now, this is layout samples from scra scrapbook and cards today, and I'll have the link below because you can download or just look through their printed magazine online for free. Yes, and so when I look at the new issues when they come out, I will print the layouts that I'm drawn to because, you know, I have a certain style, okay? So this would be like a sketchbook, but it's in color. The layout is completely done, okay, with patterns and that type of thing. And they do give some details, but there's no written instructions like scrapbook generations. But this is live in color, okay? So you see I use all four of those different types, okay? And there are so many more different types of sketches, okay? I'm just showing the ones that over the years I streamlined to, and these are the ones I go to, okay? Just look at these beautiful, I mean, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, right here's a page maps that was featured in scrapbooking cards today. Now that's a win-win. Okay, so there's the color samples, color layouts. Okay, and so for me, it depends on what mood I'm in. It depends on my brain power. If I need something that I just want to see a layout and you know run with it, I'm going this way. If I, if I need, if I'm really tired and I don't even want to think about cutting someone, someone to tell me it's scrapbook generations. If I want to do my Laura, I go to Laura and then page maps. Okay. So these are the four that I use most. And then there's one more, but I'll be showing that up in building page kits part five. Okay. So I wanted to show those options because. Even with everything else we talk about on this channel, and I keep saying you need to know your style, even when it comes to something as another tool or resource, as in sketches, you should know your style. What are you drawn to? Do you want someone to specify exactly what to cut your papers? Or do you want someone to give you some more ideas as design elements and embellishments? Or do you want a bigger scale sketch? Or do you want live and in color? Okay, so it's one of those things. You can do them all, or you may decide, hmm, I think I need to look at more of these type of sketches, okay? And if, if sketches are a struggle for you, sit down and say, what, what, am I, what am I needing from this sketch that I'm not getting, okay? And then if you want some help with that, just let me know. I can help you, uh, point you in some directions for sketches that may fit your style, okay? So that is what I wanted to talk about today. We have load going on. I I'm a week late, but that's okay. Actually, it might be two or three weeks late, but that's the beauty of load. You do it when it fits your schedule. And when you purchase load, you have that, okay? And you can refer back to it, okay? That's why I love load love load <laughs> okay so i'm going to be trying to do all seven days because i paid for it and if you pay for a class get your money's worth challenge yourself to complete it okay so now what will i do now well what i'm going to do is i now that i have my papers and i have my photo i'm going to look through my sketches i'm going to find one that kind of fits what i want to do and then i'm going to give myself probably four to five minutes to pick out some supplies because i have no embellishments okay and you know i'll just pick out my color bins if i find something that relates to books I may do that okay i'm i think i may pull a tool i'm not sure I thought about doing some stamping, but since I have these heavy designs, stamping won't fit on any of those, so I know to skip that. But, hmm, wonder what we're going to get into. Okay, so I will come back with my finished page. Okay, I'm back with my finished page, and I love how it turned out because of something that happened. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. So what I did was, when I left off, I had my page kit, and I had sketches just laying left to my uh, to my left and to my right and so what i did was i decided to pull this was a planner at one time scrapbook and card stay used to do these planners i would buy them but i never used them as planners i used them because of like a sketchbook and so i kept them as such and so this is the layout that i drew my inspiration from it was created by sherry r-e-g-u-l-y i don't want to mispronounce her last name but you can see in my layout that 
her influence is definitely here because of all the use of patterns and actually the way my photo and my main embellishment cluster and title is definitely influenced by Sherry's layout and so totally love that and so when I look at a sketch I use it as a springboard and I just run with it and what I want to do then I don't go exact copy sometimes when my brain's tired I will do that <laughs> I mean that's the beauty of sketches you can use it a little or use it a lot so what I did was I used this honkin I mean honkin wood veneer it's so big it won't even fit in my wood veneer drawers <laughs> No, it won't. And so it says love because this is about the love of reading, the love of books. And then my subtitle is Be a Reader, which that came from. And I know some of you already know where that came from because we all had it. We all fell in love with it. This October afternoon public library. This was a collection that came out five years ago. Now, this is a sticker sheet that I would not tear apart because it's such a theme. And it's something that I just kept with the collection on my bookcase. That's exactly. I didn't want to tear that up. Now, once I get down to a few of these florals and things, I may be tear down. But right now, I'm keeping it together. Absolutely. And so then... What else came off of that sticker sheet? These glasses and these flowers. And I think that was all in the love of books. Yes, absolutely. So then I just pulled a couple other embellishments, and I mean a couple other embellishments, as in some Teresa Collins chipboard and buttons, some Chamel hearts, a couple wood veneer. That was it. And then I pulled out my roller date stamp because, you know, when you're talking about books, going to the library, you must pull out a roller date stamp. And I actually put that right there. So the reason I love this is because I definitely got all those pattern papers in that was in my page kit. Now remember when I was putting together those page kits, I had no idea what I was going to be scrapbooking when I went to use this. And to me, this works perfectly. It just works perfectly because I'm going by my story, not my supply. And I think that makes a huge difference when you change that mindset. And so then, of course, the load prompt. I'll never speak enough highly of load. So the load prompt was something that lasts a lot, that has give, given a lasting imprint. And so this story is about not only just my daughter showing her reading and what she was reading at the time, which I love that. And it's also about how my mom loved to read. She gave me that influence of going to the library and reading. And then as my little one was born, I did the same thing with her childhood. And I love how that all turned out. Now, I would have normally just recorded recorded this story and talked about my my daughter and her love of reading and how that has influenced her major in college but I certainly would not have gotten this right here look at this look at all this journaling as I was working on this layout and this story I was talking to my mom and then another story appeared because she was telling me the story of how her dad had influenced her and reading into the library. And so it just sparked another whole story. So as I was doing this, I went ahead and wrote out my journaling. And so... <laughs> That's usually opposite for me. So this is why I love load. I would not have done this layout in this story manner. I would have told the story, but not the way I did it. And I even used these three wood veneer to show how something that my mom did had gave lasting imprints on me. And then but now also with my daughter. And I'm anxious to see how that will be carried forward in the future. Love that. All because of the load prompt. I would not have took this angle when I told the story. And now... I have another complete story to tell. Love that. Absolutely love that. And of course, if you're interested in the load, the information will be listed below. Okay. And so I just added a few additional elements to get in my color to do my clusters. Now you'll say, okay, where's your clusters? Here's one. Here's a honking one <laughs> with my title and this cluster because that's what showed in the sketch and then this tiny little one. Okay. And that's simply how quick that came together. I mean, the background and the embellishments, I'm thinking like 25 minutes. Where I got sidetracked was this additional story, but that's the beauty of scrapbooking, isn't it? The stories that we can tell, the stories that we're leaving behind. Absolutely. Okay, so that is all I have. Oh, one more thing. Someone had asked me, actually several people had asked me, now I'm I'm done with this page kit. This is my leftovers. Now what will I do with this? This will all go in my scrap folder. Every little bit of that. Every, I mean, some of these small pieces, I, I may be putting them in Joni's folder because I'm still keeping some scraps for Joni. So I'll just put those in Joni's pile and the rest of those will go in my scrap folder. That's what I'll do. Okay. And so that is what I have for today. Come back because you know at RTS, you never know what we're going to learn. Bye.